Hello everyone. I don't know if you can see me. I put the I put the phone on a branch so hopefully this will be able to record. I don't have my tripod. Sometimes I forget these things. I just I wanted to tell you a story that it was like two days ago I went to a deserted beach. You know I'm a bit of a hermit so I'm trying to get out of my shell. So two days ago I went to a deserted beach and I was actually sinking in quicksand because it was a bit of a wetland rather than like a, a normal beach of just plush sand. And I was knee deep in about mud. It's a bit hilarious actually. And there were only two people on the beach. They were fishermen. They were a while away from me. Not close but not far. They didn't offer help. They didn't ask me for help or anything. I didn't scream or make any reaction or or ask for help myself either and I just turned in their direction and they and they said go back to where you came from so I know some people would take this racist or offensive but at that moment I didn't I actually just turned around I looked back at the direction that I had been coming from you know that was dry sand not the wet sand that I was like immersed in and I went back that way, like a little oompa loompa, you know, <laughs> and I finally made my way out of it. And I, and I laughed because I was knee deep in mud. It was hilarious. I was by myself and I was in a bikini. Like first time I'm like in a bikini by myself, deserted beach. Anyway, and yeah, and I won't show you the bikini because I don't want people to see my body on the internet. I, don't, I prefer to be covered up, you know, because I want you to notice my mind over paying attention so much you know my body I think there's enough women on the internet in their bikinis so and no offense to that just giving you my opinion and so when I saw them again as I was walking back on the dry and I just said thank you and you know I was happy because I was in this place of magnificence I, I put the video up a few days ago of this escape, this deserted beach. It's like nothing I had really ever seen before, just nobody there. And this is summertime in Melbourne, so every beach in Melbourne when it's sunny is just packed full of people. So this was like such a delight, such a treat, such a privilege. And later I thought about it the whole day, kind of in my mind, you know, was that racist, was that offensive? But you know, I thought of it this way. When you say go back to where you came from, you know, the land always belongs to the indigenous people. Every land on earth belongs to the indigenous. So I live in Australia. The aboriginals are the forefathers of this country. The aboriginals are the first people here. In Melbourne, you don't see aboriginals. I believe they're in Darwin or Northern Territory or Alice Springs, but I've never actually met an aboriginal here in Melbourne in america it's the native americans and again you don't see the native americans they've been kicked out of their land and they're in central reservations and you know it just i just wanted to remind you that the land owns us not we own the land and nature is so powerful that it can destroy us in a second you know i'm in this beautiful rainforest here in melbourne the dandenong ranges and there is incredible trees that have been struck down by the immense force of wind. And we just have to say, wow, we are not in charge. Humans are not in charge. There's a, there's a controlling power that's greater than humanity. And it's very humbling. It's very humbling to know we're not in charge, that we don't know what's going to happen from moment to moment. La Palma is going on. La Palma volcano is going on. We don't know if that will erupt. You know, Kazakhstan is in war right now and it's not being advertised on the news. Russia was about to test a nuclear bomb uh, the first week of January and it didn't really make news. And, you know, so many things like this are happening around the world. And it just goes to show you that no matter what, the land is in control and nature can wreck havoc on everything just like it's done before with tornadoes and tsunamis and hurricanes so always come back to the nature to remember that we're nothing that we're actually at the whims of mother nature 
And I put a documentary yesterday on bananas, the exploitation of Latin America and Latin Americans who pick the bananas, but actually make such a small living and have had their lives destroyed, their health destroyed by the chemicals that American companies have been spraying for decades. And there was a first protest in the 1800s, the farmers who wanted a six day work week since they were working seven days. They wanted, you know, to get paid decent wages. Farmers are making 45 to $50 a week and they're picking the bananas that people in America are eating casually and Americans don't realize the price of the bananas. I asked my roommate, he said bananas in Australia are uh, grown in, in Queensland. So he said people here, they have to make at least $10 an hour or $15 an hour, which is a much better wage than $45, $50 a week. But Australia is a very expensive country. So the wage is higher here. Minimum wage is about $20 an hour. So I just wanted to, to make you aware those people who are interested in knowing more about how are the people who actually make the things you own or make the things you eat, how are they living? The banana documentary is fascinating for that. And, and to really, a lot of people are staying at home watching movies. I really recommend you to start looking at documentaries instead. Start to research like where does coffee come from? Do the farmers who, who harvest coffee, do they, do they get paid as much as the cafes and the companies producing coffee? So I feel like one day I'm praying that farmers don't have a middleman and so it's the farmers and the companies direct giving the money to the farmers because imagine people around the world love coffee but do the farmers actually get that money do they have a good quality of life so this is just a few questions this is just to provoke you to try and watch that banana documentary and to research you know how imperialism has affected Latin America and many countries all over the world. I talk about Latin America because my mother is from El Salvador, my father is from the Dominican Republic, and so I've seen firsthand how the mentality, perspective of imperialism has affected my family as immigrants, as a you know, as third world generation, first world generation. You know, I've gotten to see how people's minds are changed by colonialism. And I think to myself, we always have to come back to the nature to realize this is the real beauty and it's wild and it's free and we have to not take it for granted. And we have to realize, you know, when we're eating fruits and veggies, it's hard. I know we, we are all having our struggle and so we, we, unless we're independently wealthy or rich, a lot of people are always looking for how to find the best price for food. But for instance, bananas have stayed very cheap in the States because of all the exploitation going on in Colombia, in Ecuador. So for instance, in the documentary, it documents how there was a, a company called the United, Freight, the United Fruit Company that was like an octopus in all the different South American countries to be able to transport the bananas. They had to get involved with all the different countries to have different routes and you know, basically a monopoly and Ma America was funding this because they were making a lot of money. So America actually didn't care about the farmers, the poor farmers. America only cared about, America only cared about the companies who were making the money, exploiting the very workers. And when the workers finally had a protest, the company shot the farmers down. It was a first big massacre in Magdalena, Colombia in the 1800s. And many other protests happened that, that war shut down. And that's why it was allowed to go on so long, all this marginalism. I urge you to watch the documentary, Bananas, Blood, Bullets and Poisons. It's, it's very enlightening. It, it's terribly heartbreaking, but it's a wonderful thing to be able to to open our heart to all the people and to see that everybody has the right to a better life and we might not know what to do but I urge you if you have money if you if you are rich or whatever I urge you to buy organic because organic then that means the farmers will have a better quality lifestyle they'll be paid more 
there'll be less there'll be no pesticides because they're paying for more people to be watching the fruit and veggies being grown i mean i'm not buying organic because i'm not always buying them you know looking for i'm trying to get a veggie patch growing in my backyard so i have spinach and kale growing in my backyard i'm really lucky i live with people who know how to garden so we're we planted our own kale and spinach that i use in my smoothies but this is just to to warn you to remember the nature and notice your carbon footprint notice how you can make a difference in the world and become aware of the things that you buy where do they come from and and begin to become question has the authority always looked after the health of the people and I'm here to tell you the United States did not look after the health of Colombia and Ecuador in regards to their them picking bananas for Americans to eat so that says a lot about exploitation and politics and America knowing that the use of chemicals and pesticides is very dangerous but looking at South America as their backyard as what they can do what they want with means they're not always taking care they're not always caring about the other people thinking they can do whatever they want the nature is beautiful so I urge you to come here I urge you to watch my bananas documentary and I urge you to as much as you can come to the nature so you can just let things slide off your back like I thought to myself was that a racist comment and to tell you the truth I really don't care it doesn't matter because the truth of the matter is they told me go back to where it came from so I did I looked around and I thought okay this is the this is the best way going the direction of the dry sand so I backtracked and found my way out and I had quite an adventure I had quite an adventure I was there by myself it was a miraculous sanctuary and I enjoyed and today I did something completely different I went to a community lunch a community vegan lunch at an Indian restaurant and I invited a few people that I've I've met because I've been going to different groups of people who who are into you know different alternative reality uh, mind perspectives and it was amazing so many people that I invited showed up and there were quite a number of people I was intimidated at first but when I got over that I felt what a joy to be around people that are open-minded it gave me hope and faith in humanity that there are people who think different and who who want to change the world thank you for listening have a beautiful day and thank you for all of those all of you who have subscribed because i can't imagine i have almost 700 subscribers i don't make money out of youtube but i think when i hit a thousand subscribers maybe youtube will start paying me but you know i'll tell you the truth youtube was never my intention to to make a profit out of it's more to provoke people to inspire people to challenge people to make people question authority and as buddha said don't listen to anything i say question everything make yourself realize what is the truth for you i'm just here to present the ideas to make you see who has your best interest but if you'd like please subscribe let's aim at 1000 subscribers since yeah i'm not working because of the whole situation going on in melbourne and whatever your choice is on that wishing you all the best wishing you all the best no matter what no matter what because i believe there's a bigger picture to all of this and I think we were born here at this time we're supposed to be here and a lot of changes are going to come and I think we just have to learn to simplify our life learn to live more minimally and learn to see that all humans are equal and all want to be respected and to have dignity and we don't have to agree with each other but at least we can have respect for each other and dignity and 
and with that comes lack of judging other people being open-minded and having compassion for for those people that you see might be angry all the time or mad all the time or depressed all the time or suffering all the time because they're just working on their issues as as we all are some people cover it well and some people don't and so it's in your face so come to the nature this is the real healer this is the real alchemist and this is what na what the civilization where babylon won't tell you that you come to nature and it's different you don't have to be with a psychiatrist with a therapist you can in addition but this does wonders for you if you can get to the forest every day or get to the beach every day just walking or being in that energy this is giving off different particles and just reminding you that you're good enough as you are you don't need that much and to remind you that there is good there are good people in humanity but you got to find them and to find them you've got to think what are what are the things you love what are your hobbies and where would those people be who are on your vibration because i believe if we find people who are like-minded then you feel less alone and if you feel less alone then you feel less isolated and you begin to feel like you belong in the society even though you have to find your little niche in society but there's you're never alone there's always people who think differently who think radically who think alternatively and you just got to find your group your posse and once you find that group you feel happier because you feel connected we feel that spark of ideas sharing of ideas you know and other than that it's so good to spend time in the nature because the nature reminds you you're never alone when you're connected with the trees you're never alone there is a different it's a different force uniting us connecting us and reminding you that Sometimes things have to get destroyed for better things to come and maybe that's what's happening on the planet. Maybe corona was really this fantastic wake-up call. It destroyed our lives for about 2 years with a lot of upheavals, a lot of changes, a lot of confrontations, a lot of limitation of our rights that politicians imposed. But at the same time, we learned that what are our priorities? What's important to us? What do we love? you know and we had to question the the we had to question the mandates that were being given to us to see did they make sense you know were they in our best interest and were they really about health and how to promote our immune system to a better standard to a better level how to take better care of our health so i believe corona has been a huge huge blessing in a lot of ways to change our life to simplify to not be a rat in a cage running around like a chicken without a head now we all have a purpose now we are becoming more aware that life we can't take it for granted we can't take anything for granted and being on earth as a human is that chance to find that connection to something spiritual so that even if the world falls apart we have something greater we have a bigger picture to we have that bigger picture it's so easy to stay in your comfort zone it's so easy to not challenge yourself and to just stick with what you know and to not go and meet new people but i tell you life is to have adventures life is to to explore and to make discoveries and you know every time you get out of your comfort zone that you challenge your limited conditionings or your negative programming you find you're opening yourself and you're and you might be surprised there's more people like you out there than you imagine